Strict athletes rules for gymnastics. Gymnastics isn't as easy as it looks. It's the talent behind these professional athletes that makes it seem like the easiest job in the world. As we all know, gymnastics is one of the toughest sports in the world and the athletes who specialize in this sport are extremely talented. Gymnasts are expected to perform flawlessly, especially at the Olympic Games, but to make things even more difficult, they have to follow very strict rules. So in today's video, we'll be going into detail about those rules that these athletes have to follow. Undisciplined Behavior Judges may deduct fractions of a point for undisciplined behavior by a competitor or their coach. There may also be a deduction for competing out of designated order. Basically, the judges can deduct points for anything deemed negative catching their eye. Even when gymnasts perform their routines out of order, they could be penalized. Gymnasts must stay in the arena. A gymnast may not leave the arena during competition. If you leave the arena even for a toilet break, you can be penalized. Olympic gymnasts must stay away from performing illegal moves. There are certain moves in gymnastics that are banned and performing one during routine can mean big trouble for the gymnast. Usually because they're considered to be too dangerous, that's why competitors need to stay away from moves like the Thomas Salto. This is the move that rendered Elena Mukina as a quadriplegic when she landed on her chin before the Moscow Olympics in 1980. They also have to avoid the Corbett flip, which was performed many times by Olga Corbett, including at the 1970s. To Olympics. This skill is executed by standing on a high bar, facing the lower bar, jumping backwards into the air, doing a backflip, re-grabbing the bar, and ultimately swinging towards the low bar, according to Flow Gymnastics. While traditionally done on bars, the barbit flip also had a beam variation done by completing a backhand spring with a high fly in the beginning, then swinging down to a straddle position on the beam. In 2016, Olympic gymnast Deepa Kermaker talked to BBC News about attempting another extreme move the proto nova this means that she rotated 900 degrees or two and a half flips just barely spinning fast enough to land safely on her feet the stunt is so terrifying that only a handful of athletes have ever attempted it Carmaker even admitted one wrong move and she could die on the spot. Meanwhile, Simone Biles stays away from band moves altogether, telling Vogue 73 questions, it's illegal, so I've never tried one. Gymnastics routines are kept secret. A gymnast routine obviously needs to impress the judges if the athlete wants to walk away with the medal, especially at the Olympic level. That won't happen if the experts handing out points already know what's about to happen, not to mention the fact that it would be disastrous if another competitor stole a few key moves. Gymnasts are expected to keep their routines a highly guarded secret. Those who break their silence not only risk losing the competition, but they're also breaking an established rule. The International Gymnastics Federation, the worldwide governing body for the sport, addresses the tight-lipped nature of training in the FIG Code of Conduct which all gymnastics are meant to follow. It states that competitors are expected to respect the confidentiality of information between athletes and coaches. When gymnastics superstar Simone Biles took a camera along her to the Olympic Training Center in order to do a 73 questions interview with Vogue in 2016, she was asked if she keeps her routines a secret before a meet and responded with a simple yes. When the interview asked her if they could stick around to watch Biles' routine, she turned him down, stating, nope, because it's a secret. Olympic gymnasts have to be groomed correctly. There's a reason why Olympic gymnasts always look pristinely put together when they're competing. According to Vogue, the official USA Gymnastics rulebooks deems that women gymnasts must be well groomed in their appearance, noting that the bevy of regulations walk the line between preference and precaution. Vogue explains that spectators see a parade of tight braids, buns, and ponytails because hair has to be pulled away from the face lest it obstruct views of an apparatus necessary for spotting precarious landings. However, there is no quantity quantitative limits spelled out on bobby pins and elastic bands. As for jewelry, competitors are only allowed to wear a single pair of stud earrings. You can only wear earrings, nothing else. Olympic gold medalist Natasia Lewikin can explain to people, it's not allowed, but also you don't want to get in the way of anything that you're doing. Like when you're on the uneven bars, you can't be wearing a ring because you just can't. When it comes to nails, Lukain said that depends on what your head coach is likes and what they don't like. Pretty sure USA head coach Marta Carololi prefers us not to really have a bright red or bright blue, pink or purple. I think something subtle was always good. I always had like a light, light, light pink on my toenails and then nothing really on my nails. Their leotards have to be approved. Olympians are free to express their personal style in their daily lives, 
but when they're competing gymnasts, they have to wear outfits that follow specific guidelines and are approved by their coaches. Leotards, which have some part in lace, will have to be lined in the area of the trunk, according to USA Gymnastics, while the neckline of the front and back of the leotard must be proper. More than half of the sternum, no more than that at the lower line of shoulder blades. Meanwhile, dance leotards with narrow straps are not allowed. The website also stipulates that the cut of the leotard at the top of the legs must not go beyond the fold of the crotch and that it's considered to be inappropriate for leotards to give the appearance of excessive nudity. If you've ever wondered why each member of a gymnastics team is dressed the same, the rules state that leotards for group gymnastics must be identical in shape and color. They cannot fix a wedgie while competing. Along with not being able to expose their underwear, Olympic gymnasts can not fix their wedgies if one happens to occur. This is another time when perfectly designed leotards are helpful. The athletes have such extreme body types that there is no way they could just cut a standard pattern. Kelly McKinnon told Cosmopolitan, that's why each leotard is custom made to fit the athlete's body, which prevents it from shifting, sometimes inappropriately exposing body parts. When the gymnast performs, their body's manipulating moves, for example, Simone Biles is incredibly muscular but she's a mighty little package. She has big shoulders and very little hips, so literally every part of her leotard is custom. Natasia told people, you're not allowed to pick a wedgie or else you get deducted. So a lot of people use sticky spray called touch skin for your butt so that your leotard doesn't move. I've never used it and I know the girls don't really use it, but if you have a fall and your leotard goes up your butt, you don't want to fix it in the middle of your routine. Next time you get to an inconvenient wedgie, imagine what it must be like to experience one while competing for an Olympic gold medal. Safety. A coach is obligated to put their gymnast safety first. Gymnasts and coaches should not interfere with another competitor's safety either. Interfering with another gymnast in any way may be constructed as an interference with their safety. Skill levels. Generally, a gymnast must compete in the same skill level for all activities in a given competition. In other words, they cannot switch skill levels during a competition. Athletes have the right to be coached by individuals who are knowledgeable and have received appropriate training and be properly prepared for participation by those in positions of authority, including coaches, club owners, and administrators, while being able to question or report improper behavior or violations of the safe spot code, including of coaches or club owners and without fear that doing so will negatively impact their participation or success. All athletes and particularly minor athletes are entitled to have their parents observe coach-athlete interactions. Second attempts. Only one attempt is generally allowed for each apparatus unless an interruption occurs that is not the gymnast's fault. Women's vault has occasional exceptions though. When two attempts are allowed, if a gymnast grip tears during her routine, she may repeat it in a certain circumstance. Spotters. Spotters are typically allowed to stand near the rings, bar, or mat and can only intervene to prevent accidents. Fractions of a point may be deducted if a spotter intervenes, depending on competition level. Sometimes a spotter is permitted to help a gymnast into their starting positions for events such as the rings. Scoring. A judge panel usually scores gymnastics competitions. Depending on the level and league, there may be some judges, usually two, measuring the routine difficulty, while perhaps six or more evaluate performance and execution. Judges evaluate routines on a 10-point scale, and fractions of a point are taken off an apparatus and for errors. For each apparatus, points are capped at the number of a team gymnast multiplied by 10. 